trying to buy a beaten heart. I can't tell where the journey will end, but I know where to start. Tell me I'm too young to understand. Said I'm caught up in the dream. Well, life pass me by if I don't open up my eyes. Well, that's fine by me. Welcome to The Wave. Today's Globe Offering supports Kits for Crisis, which supplies health, sewing, school, bedding, birthing, and cleaning kits for their most vulnerable people during times of crisis. They provide vital support for United Methodist Committee on Relief global development work and make a tangible difference in people's lives. We Play and Learn Child Care Center, located here at Water's Edge, is now enrolling children ages six weeks to four years old. We Play and Learn is open Monday through Friday from 7 a.m. to 6.30 p.m. For enrollment information and to schedule a tour of the facility, please contact Kristen Putzke. Remember that next week we begin our new weekly worship schedule. Come to the blended worship service at 9 a.m. or the contemporary worship service at 11 a.m. For more information about worship services, go to h2oedge.org worship. 
Get your kids ready to embark on a vacation Bible school adventure that will light their way. Gear up for an over-the-top underground adventure in Cave Quest, a week-long VBS that grounds kids in the rock-solid foundation of God's love. Water's Edge VBS will be Monday, June 27th through Thursday, June 30th from 9 a.m. to noon. So mark your calendars now, and if you'd like to learn more about VBS and ways you can get involved, contact Children's Ministry Director Jennifer Fierro. The offering here at Water's Edge is not collected by plates passed through the rows. Instead, there are boxes in the rear of the worship center where you can give your offering. Envelopes are available if you need one. Also check out our online giving portal to give online. You may have noticed that the communion table is not in the worship center today. Today in our worship, we're focusing on our new life through the resurrection and how baptism gives us new life in Christ. So commune with your friends and family as you visit in the comments today. Okay, so let's recap for just a moment. Support today's GLOBE offering for Kits for Crisis. Sign your child up for daycare at We Play and Learn Daycare Center by contacting Kristen Butsky. Remember that our new worship service schedule begins next Sunday. Contact Children's Ministry Director Jennifer Fierro for more information about this year's Vacation Bible School. If you have an offering, feel free to drop it in the boxes in the rear of the Worship Center and take communion with your friends and family as you leave the Worship Center today. For more information about connecting into the Water's Edge community, check us out at h2oedge.org or on Facebook and may God take you to the edge.
that shines in the darkness. His name. darkness upon ourselves. It became our home. Living in the dark can do funny things to a person. It turns the heart inward. You begin to wonder if there really ever was a light to begin with. Over the years, we'd try to drive the darkness away, to bring the light back, but I suppose creating light was never really our job. And then one day, something peculiar happened. We woke up to a strange glow on the horizon almost as if a great light was approaching. We weren't quite sure if it was real, to tell you the truth. But it was very real indeed. The sun had returned. <laughs>
Please be seated. Water. It's life. Seventy percent of the planet's surface is covered with it. All life originally sprang from it. Without it, none of us would be here today. No life would exist. Water has always been a symbol of so many things to to people. Life and renewal, refreshment. For us, the followers of Jesus Christ, it's a symbol as well. We celebrate today the good news of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Each of the four Gospels shares this story in its own unique way. In the Gospel of Mark, we have this, this quick, brief telling of the resurrection story of people seeing an empty tomb and, and running away in fear. In Luke's Gospel, He builds upon what Mark says, and then he adds this twist. Ever focusing on the great teacher who is Jesus, Luke comes along and he he adds the component of, of telling the story of two followers walking to the distant village of Emmaus. And Jesus shows up in their midst. They don't know who he is at first, but he shows up in their midst and and he teaches them again all the things he had taught before. When John tells the story, the focus shifts again. Oh, the tomb is empty, but now the emphasis really focuses in on those women who were followers. And we see a glimpse of what resurrection has to offer. When Mary in the garden runs across a person that she thinks at least initially is is just the gardener, the caretaker, and discovers that he's so, so much more, that Christ is arisen. Each one of the tellings has their own unique emphasis to the story, as does Matthew, the version I want to share with you now. In Matthew's take, we we see the women again, we see the empty tomb, but also it gives a particular twist for the people of God. And so from Matthew, the 28th chapter, we'll be picking up in the first verse. After the Sabbath, as the day of the week was dawning, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake And an angel of the Lord, descending from heaven, came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothes white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook, and they became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He is not here, for he has been raised, as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. And then go quickly and tell the disciples, he has been raised from the dead, and indeed, he is going ahead of you to the Galilee. And there you will see him. This is my message to you. So they left the tomb quickly and with fear and great joy. And they ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came to him and they took his feet, took hold of his feet, and they worshiped him. Then Jesus said to them, Don't be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to the Galilee, and there they will see me. And while they were going, some of the guards went into the city, and they told the chief priests everything that had happened. 
And the priests who had assembled with the elders, they devised a plan to give large sums of money to the soldiers, telling them, you must say this, that his disciples came by night and they stole him away while we were asleep. Now, if anything comes to the governor's ear, we will satisfy him and keep you out of trouble. And so they took the money and they did as they were directed. And this story has been told among the Jewish people and many people to this very day. Each one has their own unique twist. For Matthew, it's this. The resurrection isn't just about the personal relationship renewed with Jesus Christ, though that component is there. We see again the women connecting and meeting Jesus. It isn't just about being taught certain things, though we see that component there when the angel comes down and then Jesus goes and gives the most basic of all teachings. Go to the Galilee and there you will meet me. And it isn't just about fear, though just like the other three, this one does acknowledge that at least the initial response to this empty tomb is great fear. But for Matthew, two things make him more distinctive than anybody else. First, there's an earthquake. The ground trembles. The rocks slide. And the enormous rounded boulder that had been rolled in place of a tomb so heavy that it would have taken an armed guard of men to roll it out. It goes sliding across the ground like some invisible hand of some invisible giant just pushes it away. The promise of the resurrection of Jesus Christ for each of us here today, for every human heart in every corner of this globe is simple. Like an earthquake, Jesus is risen. And death, death itself, is shattered and cast into a thousand, thousand little pieces. What had a few days earlier been a cross of shame and degradation and pain and, yes, death, is now shattered into a thousand different shards. Jesus has overcome death. God in Christ has overcome death and offers to you the promise that death is not the end. The people of God have heard this story some 2,000 times now. In ancient times, they would greet one another on this day with the words, He is risen! And the response, He is risen indeed. As a great celebration that whatever fear and darkness they had known in their life and whatever fear and darkness would yet come into their lives, they knew it was but a transient thing and that good news, life everlasting, was their ultimate goal. Now that's something to get shooken up about. In that earthquake and with that angel of the Lord coming like lightning with his blazing clothes, we see a promise that this world in its humdrum brokenness with hurting, sore, wounded lives and people has a chance to be shifted. Darkness is not the last word. Violence is not the last word. Imprisonedness is not the last word. Brokenness is not the last word. Shattering of your lives with whatever injury or illness that has happened in your relationships or in your own personal journey, it's not the last word. The last word is the everlasting word, Jesus Christ the Lord. 
For He is risen. He is risen indeed. And along with that death being shattered is the promise of, well, this stuff, life. At some point in your journey, you probably took a moment to recall your baptism. Or, at some point in your journey, maybe you were one who can remember your baptism. Whatever it happened and however it happened, or even if it hasn't yet happened, this water symbolizes the opportunity for new life. I remember my baptism. I was one of those ones who wasn't baptized as a baby. I'm lucky enough to remember it. I was in about seventh grade. My family and I were members not of a United Methodist Church. Please don't tell the bishop that. But of a Disciples of Christ Church. And they practiced baptism on people who were in, you know, junior high. And the church we were a part of, Central Christian, had this very unusual baptistry. It wasn't down on the ground level, but rather they had a standard chancel in an old-fashioned church. And then you went up kind of this back stairs, and they had this, well, giant tub, big enough for five or six people, built up into the second story of the sanctuary. And you walked out a side door down into the water. Now, if you got to witness from your place, it was an amazing scene because they had painted the area with clouds, and it was like these little 7th and 6th and 8th grade boys and girls were little cherubs coming across the clouds And there they would meet the minister. And he would take hold of them with his strong hands. And down they would go, and up they would come. I was old enough to remember my turn. But I have to tell you the truth this morning. What I really remember is strong hands taking me all the way under the water and getting a mouth full of water and a little nose full of water and coming up coughing and sputtering and getting a gentle pat on the back. I wasn't the only one. You see, this stuff, this stuff right here, if we're not ready for it, it can take our breath away. It can catch us up. It can knock us off our feet. It can leave us coughing and sputtering, saying, what has happened? That's what this day is supposed to be. Something that knocks us off our feet. Something that starts with fear but turns to joy. Leaves us coughing and sputtering and looking at one another and saying to ourselves, what has happened? What has happened is Christ is risen and the promise to you is that you are risen as well. Risen indeed. But here's the challenge. Matthew records a final piece to the story that's a little bit different than everybody else's. He goes on and tells you, not everybody felt fear or joy. Not everybody fell to the feet of Jesus and worshipped. Not everybody ran to the Galilee to meet him there. Now he tells you that there are others with different stories. Remember the piece about the guards? Oh, they see all of the events that the women see. And they go running into the cities, and there they find the political and religious leaders of their day. The ones who wanted to squash the movement of Jesus as quickly as they possibly could. The guards go running into the city to say, stop. And the chief priests and the elders and all of the powerful, networked leaders of the day decided that they would do something to try and put a stop to this new movement in Jesus Christ even before it got rolling. So they handed out a little money. And they said, tell them this story. that Someone came and stole the body. And that's the challenge that you face today as a follower of Jesus Christ. 
A world that still wants to struggle with the moment of resurrection and question whether it believes while you live in the knowledge that death is shattered. How are you going to respond? For a lot of people of faith, this day, Easter, is kind of the end of their faith journey. They say, I got baptized once. I come to Easter. I'm promised life everlasting. I'm done. I'm golden. But you see, the story of your baptism and the story of Easter are not the end. They're the beginning of your spiritual journey. Because this story is one that, well, it calls you now to share that story of the first Easter. It calls you now to continue on your spiritual journey and continue to grow in this renewed relationship with the risen Christ. It calls you now to serve this risen Christ, not just in the safe, comfortable places like this room, but out there, where the world still wants to scoff and still wants to say it didn't happen, and even if it did, so what? I want to invite you today. Take a moment in our time together, immediately following these words, to do two things. First, take some time to remember your baptism. This font is prepared. The, the water in here is, is just water, but it is the stuff of life. As we move into our prayer time, Step forward, touch the water. Maybe come forward as a family or with the people you love and gently share it with one another. As a reminder of what God has done for you long ago in your baptism, of what God did for you today in the resurrection of Jesus Christ, and as a promise that you won't let the resurrection be the end of your story, but that like the followers of Jesus, you will be one who sees it as a beginning, going next, out into the world, into your Galilee, to meet Christ there and to serve Christ there. And if, on your journey, you feel a need for a little bit of renewal, because you haven't, haven't been as faithful to God as you wish you had been. You haven't been as connected with God as you think you ought. Then I want you, I want you to take some time for prayer. There's not going to be any fancy pastoral prayer from the, from the leader up here today. But there's going to be an opportunity. Feel free to, to take some space right here and pause for a time of private prayer. And also, if you need or want another to pray for you, we have some people who have committed themselves, and they'll be standing on each side of the subwoofer this morning. And they'll be coming up in just a moment. And if you want somebody to pray with you, if, you, if you've got a, a burning need or a concern, if, if there's if there's something you need to get off your chest and if you believe that the sharing with it with another person gives you the opportunity to share it with god and to find love and support then they're here to pray with you and to pray for you and so you came here this morning prepared to hear the story of resurrection Did you come here this morning prepared to be resurrected and to pick up the new life that can begin today in love and servant ministry to all the world in Jesus Christ our Lord? The water is ready. Come as the Spirit leads you. And the prayer leaders are coming forward now 
to hear and be with you in your need.
Oh. 
things new and I will follow you forward. Sing it again, sing it again. You make all things new. Yes, you make all things new and I will follow you forward. And now go forward and go forth in the good news of Jesus Christ our Lord, risen that we might have new life and servant ministry in his strong name. Amen.